Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. My name is Faidan Pajala and today I'll be presenting on my mini project assignment for the subject MM603 titled The Occupational Safety and Health Implementation at Industry. So my chosen company for this assignment is my previous internship company which is Carrier Malaysia's Namrahat. I was an intern in the technical service slash warranty department so I've had a few experiences related to the industry. So a little bit of information on the company, Carrier was first established in Malaysia in 1959 under Carrier International Number High to act as a distributor for Carrier Air Conditioners. A year after that, my intern company, Carrier Malaysia, was formed to manage the after sales services for the air conditioners. Currently, Carrier Malaysia has five branches and its headquarters is located in Puchong, in my previous internship. So in the HQ building, OSH is implemented in these three main areas, the office building, the warehouse and the workshops. So now, I'm going to talk about the first section of the assignment which is the facilities available at the site. So during my internship at Carrier Malaysia, I had observed a few safety facilities that are provided in the building to prevent hazard. The first one is safety walkway. So it is a safe designated route designed to protect the safety of the people walking around the facility. Secondly, a fire sprinkler. Fire sprinklers will discharge water when it detects the effects of a fire. The third one is a smoke detector. Smoke detector is a device that senses smoke, which is typically an indicator of a fire. And the next one is air conditioning system. So, aircon is provided throughout the building to ensure safe air quality and prevent air pollution inside the building. And lastly, as part of the SOP for the COVID-19 prevention program, hand sanitizer and free masks are also provided by the company to the employees. For PPE, it depends on the working area. For example, in the warehouse, the workers or anyone entering the area will need to wear safety vests, hard hats and safety boots. Meanwhile, in the workshop, PPE includes a safety jacket, gloves, boots and goggles depending on the machinery used. So in Carrier, one of the company's maintenance programs is the Total Prevention Maintenance or TPM. So TPM will be done on all equipment in the workshop such as welding machine, air compressors and lifting vehicles. The equipment will be inspected regularly according to schedule and this is to prevent the equipment from breaking down in the future while in use which could be risky and result to dangerous incidents. So as we can see here on the slide, here is the TPM checklist. And as for the communication method, I have observed that there are three main ways of communicating among the workers such as using a walkie-talkie, using carrier app on mobile phone, and using the individual desk phones that they have installed at their desks. So the safety acts that relate to carrier separation include the Occupational Safety and Health Act or OSHA 1994 and also the Factories and Machineries Act or FMA 1967. So moving on to the next part which is the workplace hazards. For this presentation, I will explain about three possible hazards. So what is hazard actually? In simple terms, hazard is actually a source of situation with the potential for harm. Hazards can potentially bring damage to the environment and property, as well as becoming the source for human injuries or ill health. It can be categorized in various different types. So to control the effects of possible hazards that may occur, we can use the hierarchy of controls as below. The first hazard that I have identified is machine-related hazard. This is classified as a mechanical hazard and it may be caused by the machineries and equipment at the workshop and warehouse. So at Carrier, machineries that are used in the workshop include a shearing machine, drilling machines and many more. So these heavy machineries can cause permanent disability or even fatality to the victim in case of any accident happening. So to protect the safety of the workers, the person operating the machines must have an adequate knowledge and experience to ensure that they are competent enough. The workers must also use proper PPE such as using gloves to protect hands and goggles to protect their eyes in case any unwanted accident happening while working. So by using the risk assessment metrics, the risk level for machine related injuries is high. Another hazard is chemical hazard. Carrier engineers and technicians work with refrigerant all the time, such as when recharging the gas in the aircon. However, refrigerant contains harmful chemicals such as fluorinated hydrocarbons or popularly known as prion. Refrigerant poisoning can happen when a worker is exposed to it for too long. It can be very dangerous as inhaling of the chemical will deprive oxygen from the lungs and body. These harmful chemicals can cause serious issues such as breathing problems, fluid buildup, and organ damage. Therefore, using cradle to grief concept, all chemicals used must be taken care of from the transportation, handling, storage, usage, as well as the disposal of these chemicals. 
to prevent chemical poisoning, the workers handling the chemicals must always use suitable PPE such as gloves, face shields and aprons. The next hazard is biological hazard. As we are aware, the whole world is currently dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 can cause major health issues such as breathing difficulties and severe coughing. So in order to prevent the transmission of the virus at work, it is ideal to implement a work-from-home strategy for all employees. However, in cases where employees must come to the office, uh, a tight SOP must be carried out. SOP for COVID-19 includes maintaining a safe distance of 1 meter with each other, wearing face masks, as well as maintaining good hygiene by always washing hands and always using hand sanitizers. By using the risk assessment metrics, the risk level for a COVID-19 hazard is high. Uh, using the high rate form, we can determine the risk level for the possible hazards that I've mentioned before, as well as the actions that need to be taken in order to control it. As we can see on the screen, for the first hazard, which is machine-related hazard, the likelihood of an accident happening is 4, while the severity of the accident is 2, which comes down to a risk level of 8, which is considered high. For further action, equipment use must be inspected regularly to ensure that it's not faulty. Moving on to the next slide, which is Part C, the Emergency Procedure Simulation. So, emergency refers to a situation that brings an immediate risk to health, life, property or environment. It can be due to multiple reasons such as accidents, explosions and fire. In an accident emergency situation, the following flowchart can be used to assess the situation and determine the proper subsequent actions. The Emergency Response Team or ERT will be informed and initiated and the incident will be reported to DOSH afterwards through the JKKP6 form, as we can see on the screen. For example, I will explain about the emergency procedures for a machine-related injury. In case of any accident happening involving the machine, the following procedures will be carried out. First, the machine will immediately be stopped and make sure that there are no risks for entanglement. Next, we will isolate the victim from the machine and bring them to a safe location if we can. Next, we will check for wounds and injuries on the victim. And if the first aid kit is suitable for the injury level, first aid will be performed on the victim. If the injury is serious, ambulance will be called. Next, the supervisor at the site will be informed. And lastly, we will report the accident to DOSH. So we have come to the last section of the presentation, which is the OSH management system. To ensure the safety and health of all in the workplace, all personnel must adhere to the safety and health policies implemented at the facility. For the technicians and engineers going out to site, briefings should always be given daily each time before starting work. This is to educate the workers on safe work practices. For the briefing, the supervisor will lead the meeting and brief the workers on the important tasks to do that day. To ensure OSH policies are always complied at the workplace, the respective safety and health officer will conduct regular inspection with the workers. The inspection is to identify any work activity, problems and risk concerns that the workers may have as well as to ensure they comply with safety and training regulations. CARI also provides trainings, especially for new employees, such as how to operate the machines and tools absorbing the workplace for possible hazards and also fire drill training. As an intern, I will also give in these briefings. Throughout the building, carrier also provides safety reminders and alert notice. The display safety reminders will remind the workers to be more cautious and ensure that they follow the proper regulations while at the facility. So for conclusion, by relating my industry experience with what I had learned during this course, I was able to understand how OSHA is applied in the company. Other than that, I was also able to identify the hazards that are involved and also how the company is able to prevent the hazards from happening. Overall, the company practices safe working environments, although there are room for improvements. As safety is a shared responsibility, employees as well as the management need to work together to ensure the reliability of the operations and business activities. So that's all from me. Thank you very much for your time.